Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for, for being here today. My name is Mark McClellan, and I'm the Vice President of Research and Dean of the School of Graduate Studies at, at Utah State. As always, we, we, we start our sunrise session uh, with, with a thanks to, to those that make this possible. Uh, Sunrise was conceived uh, years ago now, uh, well over a decade, about connecting Utah State and our researchers with our community. And our partner in that has been and always has been uh, Regents Insurance and, and uh, Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield. They have been incredible in saying that this is what a community is all about connecting those that, that push the limits in terms of our, our research and then share that. And Miguel, we could not have done this without you guys. You have been amazing partners. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank our sponsor, uh, Miguel Rivera. Today we have Jed Hancock, director of the Space Dynamics Lab Civil Space Division at Utah State here to speak with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jed Hancock. Thank you for that kind introduction. I am excited to be here today and represent the great Utah State University. Thank you for spending the morning with me. I'm excited to talk to you about our, the many things that we do in research and development and how we protect our planet and map our future with the technology that we develop. We know that our Earth sits in a cosmic shooting gallery of asteroids, meteors, and comets. Every day, over 100 tons of meteor debris and asteroid debris impacts our Earth, over 100 tons every day. By the raise of hands, who has seen a meteor shower? It, it may, some of you may not understand that when you see a meteor in that bright flash, you're seeing only a small rock the size of a grain of sand as it is impacting the atmosphere. But the aerodynamic heating of that small grain of sand traveling at 20 kilometers per second makes a flash so bright you can see it with the human eye for 20 miles away. This picture was taken in northern Utah just this year in August. So meteors are small, tiny rocks, but asteroids are large rocks, and they range in size from the 20 or 30 meter objects all the way to multiple kilometers of objects. And asteroids are matter in our solar system trapped by the gravitational pull of the sun or other planets that did not make it into planets when the solar system was formed. They hold clues, vital clues, about how the solar system was formed and the timing of all of these events and their, their impacts are all over the planets in our solar system. Right here on planet Earth, this is Meteor Crater just east of Flagstaff, Arizona. This crater is about a mile wide, about 500 feet deep, and scientists believe that it was 50,000 years ago that it was an iron meteorite that impacted here. And the devastation that occurred was for miles around. Absolutely changed the environment, the habitat, the life that was there, and you can see that still in this aerial image from an impact that occurred 50,000 years ago. One of the fun things about modern times is we have instrumentation around the world. In 1908, on June 30th, seismometers around the world just went crazy. And citizens in England and in Asia saw the night sky glowing, just burning red. Now, this is Tunguska in the Siberian forest. And in a 31-mile diameter, every tree was leveled, and there was nothing but animal carcasses left. A citizen that was 40 miles away from the impact site was blown out of his rocking chair. And this was in 1908. When that asteroid hits the atmosphere, it's the equivalent of just dropping a huge rock in the water, and you see all the waves go. That's what happens with the atmospheric pressure. And this is in 1908, and the scientists believe this was about a 30 meter object. In more modern times, everybody has a cell phone, taxis have dash cams, there's cameras in buildings, and this event was recorded. This is an important day in, in history. This was a, a real cosmic coincidence, okay? Scientists had been watching an asteroid for a year, and they knew it was going to pass right next to the Earth, between the Earth and the communications satellites. 
okay? But what we didn't know is on the other side of the Earth, the side that is lit by the sun, where we can't see out with telescopes, was another asteroid that came. Complete surprise. And this is Chelyabinsk, Russia. And enjoy this little video. This was about 30 meters in diameter. That's good. You can see the intense bright flash that's occurring. And now some video with sound. About a two second delay from visually seeing it until the sonic boom hit and, and the pressure hit. Our solar system in 1970. What we knew about, of course, is our sun and the four rocky planets, Mercury and Venus and Earth and Mars, and Jupiter way out here in the corner. And we knew of about 4,000 asteroids. Over the next 20 years, scientists had discovered about 10,000 more. And in this frame, when I play this video, what you'll see is that from the Earth, telescopes are looking out towards the heavens away from the sun. And every time you see a, a white flash, that's an asteroid discovery. And if the white flash turns green, then it's a main belt asteroid, an asteroid that is trapped in the gravitational pull out here between Mars and Jupiter. But if it turns red, it's a nearer Earth object asteroid, an asteroid that is, comes within close proximity to our Earth. So you can see the discoveries happening. I apologize for the seasickness as the Earth goes around the Sun, and pretty soon you'll see the main belt asteroids fill in. You'll see this green ring, and you'll see red coming around here. And in about 2009, you'll see some white flashes from the sides. Okay? You can watch carefully. And here they are. Now, why the drastic increase in discovery? It was in the late 1990s that scientists around the globe mutually agreed that the end of the dinosaur era occurred because of an asteroid impact. And that they also mutually agree this asteroid impacted right in the Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula near in Mexico in the Caribbean Ocean. This impact was so devastating that it changed the environment, the climate for decades on Earth, uh, putting soot and ash and chemical in the air going all the way around the globe, cooled the planet down from what it was, changed life on Earth as it was. And so th the telescopes turned their optics to the heavens, not just to see things that were standing still, but to find things that were moving. And when you saw the white flashes on the side, um, that was discovered by an instrument built at Utah State University, and I'll talk about that instrument. So now that I've scared you sufficiently, what are the real chances of an asteroid impact? Based on statistical data and the number of asteroids we know about, a 30-meter object hits about twice a century. And we had one in 1908, and we had one in 2013. There's many that hit over the ocean that aren't recorded. 
a 140 meter object, about every 5,000 years. Now, to give you an idea, a 140 meter asteroid impact would be about 185 Hiroshima uh, nuclear bombs. And so, an impact of that size would probably take out the western United States, for example. It would be a very regional disaster. And so, Congress in 2004 mandated NASA to find 90% of all near-Earth object asteroids with a diameter of 140 meters and greater. We're not even close yet. They mandated the NASA to find that in 2004, to find it by the end of the decade. We're still not there, and I'll show you the drastic statistics in a minute of where we're going in our future. That kilometer asteroid, we call those planet killers. Luckily for us, it's about every 440,000 years. That would change life on Earth as we know it. Utah State University built the WISE instrument, the WISE mission. And you can see here that this telescope is an infrared telescope, and it's encapsulated in this large cryostat, which you can think of as a refrigerator. We pack that refrigerator, that cryostat, with solid hydrogen that cools this telescope down to about 10 Kelvin. That's 10 degrees above absolute zero. WISE was, had a beautiful launch, a night launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base on December 9th in 2009. WISE has been successfully operating in orbit now for over eight years. The cryogen, that solid hydrogen cryostat, it melts over time. And so WISE was planned for a one-year mission to make an infrared map of the entire universe. And after that year, NASA turned it off and said, great job, you've met all your requirements. But then the data started pouring in. And so after they turned the telescope off, NASA called and said, turn that telescope back on and start looking for near-Earth asteroids. And so WISE is still today operating, finding near-Earth asteroids, has found hundreds of thousands of them. The WISE instrument has produced science data that have, have been written thousands of journal articles with thousands of more to come in the future. When you look at the night sky, you see the beautiful stars, but when you look in the infrared from a telescope in outer space, everything changes. For example, stars that you yet can't see, young stellar objects, stars that are just beginning, nebula, ionized gas that is expansive as 100 light years across. Tycho supernova was a star that burned out. A supernova is when a star ends its life and has a drastic flare in the night sky. And this was witnessed in 1572 and had not been seen for 400 years. But with the WISE telescope, we can still see the remnants of that star burning out 400 years ago. In 1983, this was our knowledge of the universe in the infrared. And this is what the WISE instrument did for science. Filled in with such resolution that literally the scientists were sitting at their, at their computer consoles, not eating, not sleeping for days as this data started coming off the satellite. Okay, the great power of the infrared and the WISE telescope when you look at this image of the night sky, there are a hundred asteroids in this image. Wise proved that no matter where you look in the universe, you'll find asteroids sweeping by that are in our solar system. Here's one, here's another, here's another, several over in this nebula. They're all around. With computer codes, you can pull out over a hundred asteroids in this frame. Here's an interesting one that Wise found. This asteroid is named the Beast. Its diameter is about 300, uh, 300 kilometers in size. It's very large. And this thing came within three lunar distances of Earth. And we found out about it 46 days before it came. We didn't know it was there. In solar system lengths and distances, that's really close. Three lunar distances is very close. In, in 2010, in the year that WISE was loaded with its cryogen performing its main mission, it was the most effective asteroid mission of, of all the globe. It found one-third of all near-Earth objects in that one single year, proving to NASA, proving to the world the great power of the infrared. Another asteroid mission that we're involved with at Utah State there's an asteroid called Bennu. It's carbonaceous, which means it's very dark and black. It's in a solar orbit around the sun, just like the Earth. And we're sending a satellite to collect a sample. 
This is called the touch and go sample arm. The sample arm touches the asteroid, blows gas, rocks called regolith are collected in this item that's kind of like an air filter on a car. Then that gets carried back to the satellite and stowed in a capsule and returned to the Earth. Now it takes seven years to do this mission. And we had a beautiful launch a year ago, I'll show you a picture of. But our specific contribution are three cameras. This is the Polycam, a large 10 inch telescope, MapCam, which will carefully map the surface of that asteroid in color, and then SAMCAM, which will document the sample site and ensure that the sample is stowed safely in the return capsule for its trip back to Earth. Beautiful launch from Cape Canaveral. In the space industry, please see a launch if you can. Everything changes in here when you see that rocket take off. In 45 seconds, this, this rocket had left Earth's atmosphere and was racing ahead of the Earth through the solar system. It's now traveled over 50, 000, or 50 million miles around the sun and back to the Earth. And just a year, just last month on October 22nd, our satellite came back past the Earth. And it stole a little bit of the gravitational energy of the Earth. It used the Earth's gravity to change the satellite's orbital inclination to match that of Bennu. Bennu has a six degree inclination around the sun. And so our satellite came by, stole some energy, and is now headed towards Bennu and will reach this asteroid in about one year from today. As we flew by, we got to test out our cameras. Here's a high resolution image of our planet. You kind of notice some striations in the, in the frame here. Our cameras were designed specifically to see very dark objects, but the Earth is very bright. So we had to tune the cameras on orbit. And that's some of the artifacts that you see from having a camera that was planned to see something very dark and black to see something very bright. Took a high resolution picture of the moon and you can see all of the large impact craters of asteroids in this planetary body. If you took all of the asteroids in our solar system and smashed them all together, it would be about 10% the size of the moon. That's how much mass there is. Love this picture. Five million kilometers from the Earth and the sun, or the Earth and the moon, our satellite turned and took back and took this picture. This is where we live. It's the planet we're on, and this is our moon. And these are separated by about 300,000 kilometers. And our satellite took this picture from 5 million kilometers away. It gives you a neat perspective of the planet we live on and the solar system we're in. Fun for Utah. In 2023, when the sample has been collected, the satellite will come back towards the Earth and will eject the sample return capsule, and it will land in the West Desert, just beyond Tooele, and that sample will descend and will be taken to Marshall Space Flight Center for investigation by the scientists. Now many people say, why is it so important to get a sample? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is we'll know exactly where the sample came from. And the second reason is that we'll be unchanged. You all enjoyed your breakfast today. If we put your breakfast through the atmosphere at 20,000 kilometers an hour and heated it to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it wouldn't taste the same, right? That's why we're collecting this sample, protecting it, and bringing it back to Earth. So we have a pristine sample of a carbonation as carbonaceous asteroid that contains the building blocks of life and the building blocks of how our solar system was formed. As we look towards the future, at Space Dynamics Lab in Utah State University, we are working with NASA to build a new instrument called NEOCAM, Near Earth Object Camera. If you stood this up, it would be about the size of a basketball standard. It's a 50 centimeter infrared telescope. We will detect, track, and characterize millions of asteroids in our solar system. As we find them and we can track their orbits and understand them, we can then protect our planet. This is a bright asteroid and a dark one. If you're only looking in the visible, this is what you see. As they go away, the dark asteroid can hardly be seen in the visible. But when you change to the infrared, you're looking at the heat produced by the asteroid and they stand out wonderfully. This is what the NEOCAM instrument will do. Find these objects in the infrared. I talked about the great power of WISE. Why is NEOCAM different? Why is it optimized? WISE could only look in these very narrow places in our solar system. WISE was designed to do an infrared survey of the universe. We want to find asteroids in our solar system. So we've designed the NEOCAM mission 
to fly out here and rest in this place called Lagrange 1. It's the point in space where the gravity from the sun and the gravity from the earth are equal. And so the satellite can stay there, turn its back to the sun, and look over the ecliptic plane and see much more of the sky in our solar system. And by doing so, we'll sweep up, we'll collect millions and millions of objects. Let's talk about this drastic increase in knowledge. Right now, we know about 50,000 near Earth, or 15,000 near Earth objects. That's all we know of today. That's all we've found. But because of the statistical distribution, we know that there's at least 300,000. Wise will find another 285,000 near Earth objects that we currently don't know about. Predict their orbits, assess any impact that it may or may not have to planet Earth. Main belt asteroids. We know of about 700,000. With the NEOCAM mission, we will discover 8 million more. That's the drastic increase in knowledge that we'll be providing the science community, providing all of us to understand more of the solar system we live in and the protection of our planet. I'm so proud to be at Space Dynamics Lab at Utah State. Not only do we provide the instrumentation to help us learn more about our planet, our solar system, our universe, but we also provide technologies that protect our country. It's not every day that your employees get to lower a $120 million suite of instruments onto a satellite bank, and we do this work right in Logan, Utah. We take very serious our obligation to help protect our country, provide for the national security and national defense, and we're deeply engaged with the agencies across the nation. And probably our most important product is our people. We have 600 employees, of which, of which about 120 are students. In this way, we're providing for the future, with future scientists and engineers to perform this mission. This is probably the most important part of our mission. We know that when there are great jobs, people's lives improve. And this is the kind of impact we're having on the state of Utah and our local community. And so with that, thank you very much for listening.